The Cavalcade of America, presented by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. For our story tonight, we bring you Andrew Jackson as a hard-fisted young lawyer in the wilderness and his fight for the American way of life with equal justice under the law on the frontiers of our expanding republic. Our play, suggested by the life of Andrew Jackson, was written by Robert Tallman and Eric Barno for the Cavalcade Players. Starring in the role of Andrew Jackson is John McIntyre. The orchestra and the original musical score are under the direction of Don Burris. DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry presents John McIntyre as Andrew Jackson on the Cavalcade of America. A huddle of log cabins in a wilderness clearing called Nashville in the section of Indian territory known as Tennessee. A young lawyer is nailing his sign over a cabin door. practicing law someday. Sure do. Yeah, I, I just finished riding my circuit, Andy. Taking it easy for a while. Only two murders and ten robberies here in Nashville this week. <laughs> so you're a real judge now. Uh, right? Let me look, have a look at you, sir. <laughs> well, don't seem to give you no gray hair yet. Oh, give me time, Andy. Give me time. But, Andy, listen. Now, Nashville's not like Salisbury. Law's no picnic yet. Fact is, I come over to warn you. Gene Sorrell seen you come past the tavern toting that sign. Now, he's getting up a gang to come over here and welcome you. Well, that's mighty nice of him. Who's Sorrell, anyhow? Oh, he runs one of the biggest trading posts in this Tennessee section of the Indian Territory. Well, why don't he like lawyers? I'll tell you later, Andy. Here they come. Now, grab a rail off that fence there, Andy. You need it. Well, what for? Now, don't ask foolish questions. And listen, don't use the rail on the head. They won't even feel it. Use it like a battering ram and aim for the midriff. But say, Andy, Andy, they are. Well, well. See, the judge got over here in a hurry to welcome his fellow crook from the east. I don't know what you're aiming at, mister. But I suggest you go on back where you come from. Peaceable. <laughs> Peaceable, you hear that, boy? Yeah. Now, listen, Mr. Hocus Pocus. We got to stomach the judge here on account of the governor appointed him. We don't want no more, you eastern fellas, coming messing around here with your law books. We got our own law out here in the wilderness, see? Well, I reckon I can practice your kind of law till you see the point about mine, stranger. Grab that rail out in his hand. Hey, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now then, put up your fist, stranger. I'm prosecuting my first case, Nashville fashion. Go on, Charles, kill him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> watch me, boys, watch me. You see, I hate to hit a kid, but I ain't got no choice, Judge. I'll fan him out easy like. <laughs> you call that a blow, man? Just hold that pose for a second. That's it. You're there. Oh, I have to do better than that, Mr. Saul, if you aim to win any cases from me. Saul. Saul. Why, he's not cold. Say, lad, I guess you're wilderness stock after all. Yeah, you're the real thing, all right, kid. Welcome to Nashville. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Anytime you all need any legal advice, just come around. That's my name right up there on that sign. Andrew Jackson, solicitor at law. Uh, Judge, how about finding me a place to lodge so I can get this shack cleaned up? Yeah, sure, Andy. No, just the place. Family name of Donaldson. You'll like it there, Andy. <laughs> I mean, Donaldson's a fine man. Talk like there's some other reason I might like the Donaldson. Well, they got good food there. Donaldson's daughter's a fine cook. Yes, sir. Rachel's a mighty fine cook. <laughs> Well, 
morning, Miss Rachel. Morning, Mr. Blythe. Morning, Mr. Sorrow. Good morning, Miss Rachel. Hi, ma'am. Just dropped by with a list for our week's provisions, Mr. Blythe. Send them right over, miss. Well, uh, by the way, you might uh, tell that lawyer friend of yours he better take care of his health. Moving in here, taking over the job of prosecutor all in one week. Must be a strain. Andy Jackson will keep his health. Good day, gentlemen. Good day, Miss Rachel. Good day, ma'am. This, uh, Jackson's getting ahead too fast around here to suit our purposes, Blythe. He's nosy, too. Eh? Yeah. Been asking questions of the Indians coming up to my trading post. Mm. But he ain't found out nothing yet. About our deals with the Spanish to keep the territory out of the states. But he will if he stays on here and keeps snooping. How do you aim to run him out? Uh, him and the judge ride circuit next week. Ah. If there's a few scalpins here in Nashville whilst he's gone, and if we let it be known that his talk is riling up the Indians against us, well... So, your pole cat sure. Shake, Gene. Shake. Well, Mr. Jackson, you've been in Nashville a month today. How do you like it by now? Can't complain, Rachel. Can't complain. Except I hear the Cherokees are collecting muskets. I got a notion they ain't doing it for fun. Do you think there'll be trouble? Oh, now, listen to me getting you all upset, Rich. Now, I tell you, there's nothing like getting back to Nashville and a piece of your elderberry pie. <laughs> it's wonderful, Rachel. Wonderful. Can I cut you another quarter, Mr. Jackson? No, Rachel, thanks. I had enough. You know, Mr. Jackson, you clean up a pie as quick as a case in court. Well, I'm a natural enemy of scoundrels and a friend of good pie. I can love as good as I hate, Rachel. <laughs> I, I was going to the spring now. Would you come with me? I'd feel safer. Madam, my guns are at your service. Well, let's go then. <sighs> Mr. Jackson, do you think you'll ever succeed in establishing law in these wild regions? Ah, oh, let's don't talk about law, Rachel. Look at this beautiful fall day. Who mm, breathe the air out here. Indian summer. I... I'm sorry, Andy. It's so hard to forget. The Indians killed Deb Green's little girl just beyond the spring there. We paid them for the land, Andy. Why must they come back to murder our children? I think the Indians, Rachel. The Spaniards in New Orleans, giving them arms and stirring them up again. They want to scare us into joining Spain for safety. Andy! Andy Jackson! Well, who? Why, it's Adam Campbell coming from the North Trail. Andy! Andy what? Hank, you're turning your back. Speak up, Adam. What's happened? They just found the McKay family. Murdered in their beds. All of them. What are you, what are you all fixing to do about it, Adam? There's a posse forming now at the courthouse. They want you to lead them. Oh, mercy. We're going to find the scoundrel that's been giving arms to those Indians and string them up. Well, now, look here, Adam. I'll do all I can to help you find the fiend you're after, but whoever it is, will you find him, you're first going to bring him here to that log courthouse for a fair trial. Fair trial for that scoundrel? That varmint? When we lay hands on now, him... look here, Adam. If you've got a bunch of men up in arms over this, there's more important work to be done than a lynching. Maybe getting the wrong man. The Cherokees are getting together out in the western country. If we don't stop them at the border, they'll be in Nashville before we know it. Adam... You're going to get your men together. We're heading to Cherokee country tomorrow morning. Well, how can we do that ourselves? The governor won't authorize a militia. Andy, are you sure it's the right thing to do? Remember Zeb Green's little girl? Yes. Yes, Andy, I, I guess you're right. But, Andy... Yes, Rachel? Uh, before you go, I want you to give me a likeness of yourself. Rachel. I want to carry it in this locket. Ma carried Pa's there during the revolution, and she swears it's what got him back alive. The territory led.
legislature is now in session. The chair recognizes Governor Sevier. Mr. Speaker, members of the legislature, I've called you here because word just come that Andy Jackson and his men are on their way back from the Cherokee country. Now, it's up to you to decide what we're going to do with those fellows. Mr. Speaker, I suggest we strike off some medals and pin one on every man of that party. Well, Mr. Donaldson, Mr. Donaldson, you don't understand that Jackson led those men against the Cherokees, contrary to the will of this legislature, and against my official orders. Governor, he licked them, didn't he? <laughs> well, that, that's got nothing to do with it. Jackson and his men have committed an act of aggression against New Spain. They've got to be punished. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Sorrell. Uh, Mr. Speaker, aside from punishing Jackson and his men, I think it's about time we went on record whether we intend to join the United States or Spain. We can't go on serving two masters, that's certain. Mr. Speaker, Tennessee will never serve any master. Tennessee is going to be a free member of a free union of states. Listen here. Any fool can see what's wrong with that. We should have joined Spain, placed ourselves under a strong authority, instead of a bunch of weak-kneed nincompoops, like Thomas Jefferson. Mr. Speaker, I object to this insult to the President of the United States. Order. Order, gentlemen. There's a question before the legislature as to whether or not Andrew Jackson and his men should be punished for the expedition against the Cherokees. If there's no objection, it'll be put to a vote. Mr. Speaker, I object. Captain Jackson, what you doing Mr. here? Mr. Speaker, Captain Jackson's not a member of this body. He has no right on this floor. I'll let the members decide whether I have any right on this floor, sir. Men, you want to hear my side of this or not? No. Very well. Now, tell me. Have there been any scalping since we went on that expedition? All right. All right, tell me something else. Has Mr. Saul left town? Mr. Speaker, I have checked. <laughs> Captain Jackson, personal remarks to members are out of order. Very well. I just want to say this. I came out here without much knowledge of law. But one little I did have, I had to revise. The frills and the furbelows of corporate justice just don't apply here. When I lead a case out here, I say to the judge, do what's right between these two parties. As between myself and my men in this legislature, I say the same thing. I ask you to do what's right between us. That's all. Mr. Speaker, I call for three cheers for Captain Andrew Jackson and his men. Hip, hip. Hooray! 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 The legislature, uh, the legislature is adjourned. Well, Captain Jackson. Oh, sorry. I forgot about you. I should have made my speech a little longer. I should have told them, I think I'm on the trail of the traitor here in Nashville at last. I wouldn't be too sure of that if I was you, Jackson. You know there's only one trouble with this fair trial of yours. There ain't no guarantee a fellow will live long enough to present his case. Andy, thank heaven you're home safe again. The enemy was nothing compared with my countrymen in the legislature. Well, I hope you'll stay home long enough to appreciate my cooking this time. Afraid I can't, Rachel. I'm not even unpacking my kit. I'm going to Natchez. You're not going to Natchez alone. I'm going with you. Well, your father wouldn't allow it. I won't allow it, Rachel. Then I'll have to follow you without any escort. They say you've made the trail safe the whole way, and I've always wanted to see the Mississippi, so there. But this is different, Rachel. I've got a very special reason for going to Natchez. It's not going to be safe for me anyway. You're wasting your breath, Andy Jackson. Well, if you won't listen to those reasons, there are plenty of others. Think of the scandal. You leaving town with me. There won't be any scandal. We're going to be married by the justice of the peace before we start. Rachel. Rachel, you really mean that? Yes, Andy. I really mean that. <laughs> 
Three, three miles to Natchez, Rachel. Be there before dark. I'm sorry we're nearly there. These have been such wonderful days. I never knew this western country could be so beautiful. Neither did I, Rachel. And I've seen it before. Andy, listen. Mm. Who now? It is getting late. Pull up a minute, Andy. Listen. Is that a hoot owl? Come to think of it, I never heard anything sound so much like a hoot owl. It's a little too natural. You mean? There's a Cherokee encampment near here. That may be the one I'm looking for. Rachel, I'm going to get you to Natchez quick, and I'm coming back here. But you can't come out here alone at night. I won't have to. Not if Sam Bower's in town. Sam Bower in Natchez? But what for? Same thing as me, Rachel. Same thing as me. Not really a hoot owl, Andy? Well, maybe so. But that light over there ain't coming from Natchez. Come on. You're right, Andy. That's engine camp, all right. Big fire, too. They must have a powwow on tonight. Better have our guns ready. Take it real easy, Sam. Them engines have ears like mice. Yeah. Andy, ain't that English they're speaking? I can't tell you. Duck behind this rock, Sam. They're coming up this way for the power. Yeah. Chief, we no like white man's son. Chief, people tired, much fighting. Long no chief in Tennessee. Yeah, but I tell you, Black Wolf, this chief will be as a woman when the Spanish chief is... It's a white man. Sorrow. So sorrow is our man. Shh. Black Wolf, black medicine man. Medicine man say, no, listen to you. Spanish chief promise our land back if we fight. Take more land from us instead. Oh, but don't you see? They've only taken it temporarily. For your own protection. The she-cat eat her young to protect them also. But it's not good for the young. Don't you want to be revenged on the Tennessee chief? Look. I have a new kind, Thunderstick. Much more magic than the old musket. Shoot six cartridges without reloading. This powerful magic I'll give you for nothing. Only because I'm your friend. And want to see you then. I think we've heard enough, Sam. Right. Let's go. All right, Saul, put up your hands. Jackson! All right, Black Wolf. We don't want to harm your people. We only want to take this trailer back so we can punish him. Very well, Chief Jackson. Black Wolf, too, we wish peace. Go with you, prisoner. I send scouts to guard you into Natchez. Black Wolf, you're making a big mistake. You'll see him. Indian, no. Bird that fowls own nest may foul another soil. Go, Chief Jackson. Go in peace. Andy! Andy! What is it, Ed? What's going on over there? Hey, Sora. They broke in the jail and dragged him out. Going to string him up. Come on, I got to stop this. All right. Let me through here. Let me through here, do you hear? Now listen to me, everybody. Listen! Quiet, everybody! Keep hand to Jack. I know what a po 
polecat this fellow is. I caught him. Didn't I bring Saul back to Nashville? But I say he's got to stand trial. Trial? Well, that murder and skunk. Ah, you crazy, Andy Jackson. I'm quiet, all of you. Sheriff Brett, it's your job to preserve order here. What are you doing in this lynch party? Get a posse. Summon anyone you need and turn that prisoner over to the law. Can I summon anyone at all? You mean that? Sure you can. You ought to know that. All right. I'll summon you. You go ahead and do it. Go ahead, Mr. Prosecutor. You're the posse. Yeah, go ahead. Take him. All right, then. Step back and give me that prisoner. Because by the tunnel, he'll have a trial. Stand back. Well, I sure didn't expect no help from you, Jackson. I don't care nothing about you, Sorrel. I'm trying to uphold the law in these parts. Sheriff, let me have that prisoner. No, I won't. Give me that prisoner. And Jackson looks to me like I see blood in your eye. I guess it's time to sing small. Yeah, take him. <laughs> I guess this is as clear a case of dastardly villainy as you could find. This traitor was caught delivering weapons to the engine. Documents found on him prove him a Spanish hire. His soul is guilty of blackest murder and treachery. All right. I'm through, Judge. Has the defendant anything more to say? I'm saying nothing. Then the jury may deliberate on its verdict. We don't all the deliberating we need, Judge. What's your verdict? Guilty. Very well. Very well. I sentence the prisoner to be hanged as soon as convenient. Well, there you are, Andy Jackson. We could have had this done an hour ago. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, all of you. I'd like to have this understood. Judge Bars and I come out here to establish justice for everyone. By heaven, there's going to be justice. And that goes for every man in this room. As for you, Peter Hancock, and for you, Isaac Stone, all of you, if you ever stand before this bar as defendants, you get justice too, no matter what I think of you. All right, Your Honor. The bench wishes to thank the prosecutor once more for maintaining the dignity of the court. Thank you, Judge. I'll do my darndest for the dignity of the court if I have to skin the hide off every scoundrel in Tennessee. By the tunnel, I mean it. Young Andy Jackson. Out of our frontier wilderness came another dynamic force in America's progress. For it was here at the very beginning of the trail he was to blaze to the presidency that Andrew Jackson began his great struggle to enforce justice and freedom in the building of our American nation. Thanks to John McIntyre and the Cavalcade players for their performance of the story of young Andrew Jackson on the Cavalcade of America. And now DuPont brings you news of chemistry at work in our world. If you own a car, you've no doubt wondered what's the best way to take care of the finish, or the paint, as some people call it. The finish on your car is probably a lacquer 
or a synthetic resin enamel. Practically all cars today are finished in either one or the other. These finishes are bright and shiny when they're new, and they keep their luster a remarkably long time. But if you neglect them, they will eventually grow dull and faded looking, due partly to an accumulation of traffic film and partly to a slow microscopic erosion or weathering of the surface. You will understand weathering better if you remember that a car finish is made up chiefly of two materials, a powder called a pigment used to color the finish and give it body, and a binder to hold the finish together. Sun, rain, wind, and other elements have a tendency to wear away this binder. This wearing away partially exposes some of the tiny pigment particles, roughening and dulling the smooth surface. And the rougher the surface becomes, the easier it is for dust and grime to stick to it. It can become a very bothersome problem. Looking at this problem scientifically, what is needed is a polish that will loosen and clean off the bits of pigment that stand up where the binder has worn away. If you make the surface smooth again and get rid of the grime, you'll bring back the original luster. You'll brighten the colors, too, for the faded appearance is caused largely by the protruding pigment particles. They look duller when sticking up out of the binder than they do when they're embedded in the car finish. Washing alone doesn't remove dead pigment or traffic film. That's why the DuPont chemists who invented Duco lacquer and Dulux enamel have developed two liquid polishes that are scientifically formulated for the automobile. It stands to reason that the chemists who develop the finish on your car should know best what to use to maintain its beauty. The first of these DuPont polishes is called number seven polish. Number seven polish is suitable for all car finishes, whether they're new or old whether they've been cared for or neglected. It's the quick, easy way to car beauty. The second DuPont polish is called Speedy Wax and is designed primarily for cars that are new or fairly new, not badly weathered. Speedy Wax cleans and wax polishes at the same time and makes the finish sparkle like new. DuPont also makes two other polishes, Duco Cleaner and Duco Wax, for those who like to clean a car first and wax polish it afterwards. This method takes longer and calls for a little more work, but it gives greater protection against weathering. DuPont polishes have been scientifically formulated and tested by the men chiefly responsible for the modern car finish. They represent another contribution of the chemist, who brings you, in the words of the DuPont pledge, better things for better living through chemistry. And now the star of next week's program, Agnes Moorhead of the Cavalcade Players. Next week we're doing the story of a girl, an almost legendary girl, who became the sensation of an era for her crack marksmanship. A favorite with American audiences at Wild West shows, Annie Oakley became one of the most famous women of her generation. In tribute to her marksmanship, the entertainment world still calls passes, or tickets with holes punched in them, Annie Oakley's. We hope you'll listen to her story on Cavalcade next week. In support of John McIntyre on tonight's program with the Cavalcade Players, Agnes Moorhead was Rachel, Ray Collins, Sorrell, and Carl Swenson, Judge Bowers. On the Cavalcade of America, your announcer is Clayton Collier, sending best wishes from DuPont. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Mm.